Look, I don't want to make my channel just me debunking all of Endymion's on stupid stuff, but like, he made a stupid video, I saw Spider-Verse like two days ago, and I was already gonna make a review of it anyway. In fact, before I get to Endymion's video, I'm gonna do a little mini review of Spider-Verse, so if you don't want to see spoilers or just want to get to his video, then just go to this part of the video on the screen, the timestamp. In case you couldn't tell, I'm also doing this one unscripted. Also, to everyone who watched, liked, and commented on my last video, thank you. And Andy, if you're watching this, I don't mean that like dunking on you was good, just the response to that video was way better than I thought it would. Like 1.4k views in 12 days. I never expected that to be on my channel in like a long time. Editor's note, aka still me, I am not good at editing videos in a timely manner. And while I've been editing this video, my other video has amassed over 4.5k views. Just Wow, thank you everyone. It did way better than I expected and that just made me feel good. Also, Endy, are you 12? Anyway, on to Spider-Verse, I thought it was really good. I didn't think it was perfect, but it was still really fun. Like the animation, oh my god, the animation. It is so good. To quote the video that Karsten Runquist made about it, it's just the fucking face for the eyes. Like before even the movie starts, when they're just showing the company logos, I was bombarded with so much different color and creativity that it just blew me away. And the different styles just look so good. Whenever I saw the Vulture, and his like old paper Leonardo da Vinci aesthetic inside of the colorful world in Gwen Stacy's dimension I was like dang this is gonna be a good movie right here another thing I liked about the movie was its comedy and it was really funny if I mentioned every joke that made me laugh I'd be here for like three hours so I'll just say something that I liked like spot one of the bad guys in the movie and during his first action scene Miles is just texting his parents because he's trying to get to a college orientation thing and that was pretty funny also do you remember in the original original Spider-Verse movie where Miles throws a bagel at someone in a science building and then the bagel hits him and then it says bagel around the guy? That guy turns into Spot and I was laughing my ass off whenever they revealed that. Oh, and speaking of that, they say the word ass and crap in this movie even though it's rated PG, which isn't a dox against the film, it's just the MPA or MPAA or whatever they are's ratings are just really weird. As for the story, it felt like the best parts of the movie where it was using like storytelling and comedy at the same time whenever it was just doing comedy or just doing storytelling it just didn't really click that well for me the characters were really fun the casting was great the voice acting was great my two favorite spider people in the movie were spider punk and indian spider-man aka Paviter Prabhakar. I am definitely mispronounced that. I'm sorry to everyone. I really like the paper cutout aesthetic that they gave to Spider-Punk. Plus his personality was just pretty cool. He had this really thick Cockney accent and whenever they did the comic book intro for him like they did in this movie and the last movie he was all like, Oi bruv, I hate me the PMs and the Paul, man. I'm gonna be going down to Downing Street and throwing a molly on all these coppers and after that me and the lads will be going having a smashing night of point after point after point down our throats down at me local pub. Wait, that kind of sounds Irish. Although I thought it was pretty funny that during the sequence he was like, Oh, I'm not gonna show you my face, get out of here. And then like 10 minutes later he just does that. I thought that was pretty weird. And Paviter was just so much fun to watch. And even though I knew what his character was going to be like because somehow the trailer from Sony India was in my recommended and that was just basically only talking about Pavita, he was just really fun to watch. He seemed like a really optimistic guy and clearly the guy who was voice acting him was having a lot of fun. Apparently a lot of people were having trouble with the audio in this movie like this guy in a Discord server I'm in and Endymion actually mentions this in the video that I'm talking about. And I am not one of those people because me and the two friends that I went to see the movie with didn't notice any issues at all. It seems like it's a theater issue and not something that has to do with the movie. The only audio issue I had with the movie was during the scene where Gwen and Miles were hanging upside down from the top of that building. Which, now that I say that like that, that sounds weird. that sounds off. It felt like they should have used an instrumental instead of a song with lyrics because I can't really tell what happens during that. Whenever they use songs with lyrics, whenever the characters are supposed to be talking to each other. And yeah, I understand that this is probably most definitely personal preference and not me like, you know, rightly criticizing the film. But like, they do that a lot on Grey's Anatomy and I cannot watch that show whenever my parents put it on for that specific reason. So yeah, Across the Spider-Verse, really good. Good. Watch it now, please.
Not forcing you. And that brings us to Endymion's video about all of this. Across the Spider-Verse pushes woke gender ideology plus Punisher erased from Marvel plus trans Gwen Stacy. And the thumbnail just speaks for itself. I have nothing else to say about it. It's just... Uh, I don't really think it's that bad. I just hate puns. And you know, I think I did hear something about Gwen Stacy possibly being trans, so let's have a watch. What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and like many of you this weekend, I left my cold cave to venture out into the warmth of society in order to see across the Spider-Verse. I also never saw a more pissed off audience reaction to the words to be continued in a long time. Seriously, my theater was so angry that the movie just ended like that, but hey, clearly the box office numbers are saying it was the right move. Oh, I forgot to mention that in my review, and yeah, there's gonna be spoilers for the ending in case you skip that. So, the movie ends on a cliffhanger where Miles is captured and Gwen Stacy is going out to find him, and then it just ends. And like, I can understand how people could be mad that the movie that they went to see isn't finished. But from the way I see it, I don't get how you could be mad that there's gonna be another movie just as good as this being made. And yeah, the sequel being good is just an assumption, but I'm really hoping that the next one is good. One of the bigger discussions coming out of Spider-Verse wasn't around characters like Miles or Miguel. But instead, there's been a growing fascination about Gwen Stacy and how fans believe that Spider-Verse subtly pushes the idea that Gwen might be trans. Okay, so first off, I like that he's saying, well, people aren't talking about one of the main characters or the bad guy, they're talking about the other main character. Also, the fact that he used the word push doesn't really sit right with me, not only because I didn't notice anything about Gwen Stacy being trans in the movie, which is probably on me, and you know, could also mean that they were subtle about it or something, but it makes the movie seem like it's like, Gwen Stacy is trans and you better like it or else, and it's, it's just, the way he uses words really intrigues me. This is supported in a few ways from Gwen's room clearly having a protect trans kid flag in her room, to her father also having a trans flag pin on his police jacket. And there's also a scene in the film where Gwen and her father confront each other and the colors of the scene transition into blue, white, and pink, which are the colors of the trans flag. Oh, that, that seems like pretty good points. Like, not just the fact that she has a protect trans kids flag in her room, but her dad, a kind of old guy and a cop, like it says in this tweet here, has a trans flag on his uniform. I didn't even notice those things while watching the movie. And after knowing all this, I honestly do believe that she could be trans. Also, Andy, why did you only show the support trans kids flag? It only took me a Google search to find that image I showed you earlier. Whenever you make an argument, you're supposed to support that argument with stuff, and that's a stuff right there. All of this, apparently, has turned Gwen from a strong and likable character overnight to a trans icon. You do know that it's possible for icons to be strong and likable characters, right? People are celebrating this because there's not a lot of transgender characters in popular media when you compare it to every character in popular media. So whenever they see a character that they like and that is, I don't know, strong and likable, and the movie hints at that she might be trans, people think that she's trans and they celebrate that because it's good transgender representation. Also, let's have a listen at the evidence that Endy thought was so good that he ignored the stuff that happened in the movie. But the question remains, is she trans? I would wager in my honest opinion that she isn't for a few reasons. To start, in case you aren't aware, there's been this ever-growing movement around the ethics of voice acting and how characters must be voiced by people who look like the characters in real life. Ah, this debate. The debate I haven't heard in like... Two years. There was even a viral clip of someone showing various actors of the Avatar franchise doing a quick voice line as the characters they play. A lot of people got mad when they realized that these oftentimes Asian-centric characters were being voiced by white people mostly. This entire growing debate that you must look or be the thing you voice act as will likely only get worse as time goes on. I would be complaining that he isn't showing any comments, and so I actually went to the tweet that he showed in the video, and a lot of people in the comments who tweeted on it on or the day after it was tweeted seem to be pretty positive and hate the voice actor for Korra. I haven't watched a lot of Avatar and haven't watched The Legend of Korra, so I'm indifferent to that. I don't know what that means. But, you know, maybe there was a Twitter moment or it was on trending about all this and I don't use Twitter, so that may be the case. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But the top comments are mostly pretty positive. It's almost like the people who care about what voice actors look like 
are a small but vocal minority. So you're probably wondering, what does this small rant have to do with Spider-Gwen and her apparently being trans? If we apply the same logic to Spider-Gwen in the same way people these days do with other voice actors, then Gwen being trans would be inherently problematic because her voice actor, Haley Steinfeld, is not trans. Again, with the phrasing, people these days. Because, you know, when everyone saw the Little Mermaid remake, they were shocked to find out that Sebastian wasn't voiced by a crab. Also, that's a pretty big leap in logic. Like, he did give some pretty good reasons as to why she could be trans, but no, because her voice actor isn't trans. It's not like, you know, in the movie, there are hints to that, and her voice actor doesn't matter because her voice actor isn't on the screen because she's voice acting. Yeah, because, you know, ignore every other interpretation and just hone in on that one, because why else would she be trans unless she actually is? The other defense I bring up is simply that Spider-Verse subtly nods to trans viewers with the use of colors to show that the creatives behind it know they exist. And simply saw the scene between Gwen and her father to be an effective way to display trans visibility within the scope of Gwen's story in Spider-Verse. Using Gwen's story as a way to show trans visibility. Huh, maybe that's implying something. I don't know, I don't know. Also, how did you make the assumption that that is why there's trans visibility stuff in the movie? Did you work on Spider-Verse? Do you have insider knowledge that I don't know? Although her being trans outright, I highly doubt, because again, if she was, then Haley Steinfeld wouldn't voice the character. Okay, I will not lie, I... I love this logic here because it doesn't make sense. Because like I said, he's ignoring what the movie is telling us and is like, uh, nuh uh, because did you look at her voice actor, bro? Unless Spider-Verse's producers pivoted in between the making of films and saw a ripe opportunity in order to pander. This concept of pandering in retrospect is nothing new, of course. We all remember when J.K. Rowling went on a retconning spree with Harry Potter. What? Even if you assume that the makers of Across the Spider-Verse are pandering, this is nothing like the J.K. Rowling situation at all. J.K. Rowling did that stuff like 10 or 15 years after her series ended. This one is still going on and, you know, we could still learn more about characters as they go on. These sorts of reverse pandering tactics are usually only done because of two reasons. The first being that it's easy press and will likely push sites to publish articles supporting them, while the second major reason being that it's simply politically correct to do so. Or three, maybe the character is just supposed to be gay or trans because that's who they are. Like, take William Clockwell from the first season of Invincible. Like, yeah, he's gay and he has a boyfriend, but does that matter in the grand scheme of the story? No. And to be honest, I think that that can be a good thing. Like, people or characters can be gay or trans, and their entire personality isn't just gay or trans, you know that, right? Because I'm gay. Could you tell? Am I no longer a strong, likable character? I don't know. And I don't care. Maybe some people want to reflect that there are trans people living in the world, or gay people living in the world, and they want to show that there are gay people or trans people living in the world right now. And I'm not talking about just putting their flag in the movie and moving on like what Andy thinks happened in Across the Spider-Verse. I'm talking about actually having a trans or gay character on the screen. If pushing gender ideology wasn't politically correct, you'd see a lot less of it in today's media. But the fact it is viewed as right think by the powers that be, that's why it's pushed so much. Wrong think. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Like, not liking trans people is bad because the government and the corporation said that trans people are good. And you know, because accepting people for who they are is bad, I guess. Companies do this all the time. Look at G4 Tech TV that used to push edgy, oftentimes goofy content because in that era, it was considered funny to be edgy. But if you fast forward to G4's revival, you had people like Frost, who was the antithesis of the golden years of G4, who instead of being funny for funny's sake, decided to ostracize the audience into insane backlash that led to the quick death of G4's revival. Okay, I don't know what he means by brought backlash, because he doesn't explain his points again. 
One research late there. Yes, this is really the best transition I could think of. Okay, so I looked up the stuff about Frost and it's actually pretty interesting. So it seems like people are most upset with her because she made a rant about sexism and gaming on a G4 stream, which happened in a moment where her teleprompter wasn't working. She went off script and started talking about how she was upset because people were complaining that she wasn't as pretty as the previous G4 host. Or as she likes to put it, But every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us, I can see you, without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. Ooh. It's somehow- Talk to him, Frost! And honestly, that's a pretty valid reason to be upset. She also talks about what she sees as unfair backlash just because she's a woman. Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed. And yeah, it also happens to Gerard and TBH, but that doesn't discount the sexism of how it happens to me when it does. And after watching the rant, I wanted to see what another person's opinion on this topic was. So I watched Review Tech USA's video about Frost leaving the gaming industry. And for the most part, I'd say that this video is pretty good. He talks about G4, their lack of support in Frost, and their recent change to a more edgier kind of content. Like how she wasn't fired just because of her politics, but because after that rant, G4 got a lot of backlash. And how the leaders at G4 had two options. They could either A, show support for Frost's rant and double down on her opinions, or conform to what the audience thinks, which has a really good monetary reward. It's like what Review said says here. 99% of people, not just in the gaming industry, but especially in the entertainment industry and in, in the corporate world as well, they're snakes in the grass. They'll tell you that you're there, your friend and everyone acts all hunky dory and oh, we're so happy in front of the camera, but behind the scenes, holy crap, there are so many people that loathe, loathe each other. And they would throw you under the bus in a heartbeat if it meant furthering their career. And also, according to his video, later on they had a stream where a whole bunch of VTubers were watching Amaranth come out of a ball pit in a bikini. And speaking of objectifying woman, Andy, didn't you also kind of do that in those tweets that I showed near the beginning of the video that I had to censor because of your objectification? Like, this woman took a picture of a nebula that's like millions and billions of miles away. Something that we will probably never see in our lifetime with our naked eyes and will never go to, but now we can see what that looks like. And your takeaway from that picture is just, She has titties. I like titties. I'm gonna go tweet about her titties now. And as for the other tweet, I get the joke of, Oh, I'm gonna talk about her butt, but hey, the music was pretty good too. But it's a photo, so there's no music in it, and that makes you look even more stupid. That's why you have random commercials where things that have nothing to do with gender ideology pandering out of nowhere like this new Ford commercial. Here, watch. Okay, then he plays the commercial, but it's really zoomed out and has this music over it. When you feel like it's over And nothing else matters And that got me curious if that was the actual audio that was in the ad, and so after one simple YouTube search, I found this video. So yeah, that's not the same music. And he doesn't mention that he changed the audio for copyright reasons like one would assume he would mention since he did change the audio. He just moves on. And I get that you could say that it is for copyright because he used the same background when he showed that Twitter clip earlier. But for that, he only showed the video from the clip. And in the context of this video, it can easily be believed that the audio that Endy is playing is the audio from the actual advertisement. First, he says, here, watch this ad. Plays the video for the ad without playing the original audio and doesn't say that it was altered. And second, the music that Endy plays in the video for the ad fade in at the exact same time. The video even fades in right after the transition. And just saying it's pretty easy to add something to the video to say that it's edited. I needed to do things like that a lot for this video because my original recording was unscripted and I was bound to make mistakes. Like noticing that I didn't record something or wanting to add more to what I was saying just like I'm doing right now. So I added text to the screen or recorded new lines or re-recorded some of the lines that I already did. And just saying all it takes to add text in Vegas Probe, the video editor that I use, is just right clicking on a video track and selecting 
insert text media. Then you can edit it to make it say whatever you want. And if you're using Audacity to record audio, which is a free software by the way, then your microphone and audio settings are the same as they were the last time you used it. Then all you do is export the audio to your computer as a .wav file so that it can be used in your video editor. What I'm trying to say from all of this is that if he's intentionally misleading about something as trivial as this, then he can mislead about a whole bunch of other things too. And if this really is just ignorance and Andy forgot to say that the audio is altered, then it's still misleading. It's important to pay attention to the way you present things in your videos, unless you don't care. What does rainbow flags have to do with Ford trucks? I guess what they're saying is that gay people are tough? But we all know the only reason that commercial exists is to pander in order to up Ford's ESG score. Okay, but like I showed in the description of that video a bit ago, there's an actual reason why the ad was made. And by the way, that video is the first thing that shows up whenever you search Ford Very Gay on YouTube, and it's literally right there in the description, so I don't know how he missed that. And after looking it up, Ford made the Very Gay truck in response to a comment on the Ranger Raptor Special Edition ad on YouTube that called the blue color of it very gay. And although I couldn't find that specific comment even after scrolling down in the comments until I couldn't scroll anymore, I found this in the brief for the Very Gay Raptor ad made by the advertising company that made the ad. It could be possible that the person who made that comment deleted it after Ford responded to it, but I don't know. And while all of this was in response to one comment which I cannot prove is real, I thought it was pretty funny and there actually was a reason why it was made. And I bet there's gonna be people out there who watch this video and say, oh you're just defending Ford because you're gay and you want the gay to be out there and no that's not it there's more context to the ad than Andy gives in his video. Hey didn't I mention something about misleading a bit ago? Also what's an ESG score? I'm gonna look that up. Okay apparently an ESG score is a measure of how well a company addresses risk with respect to environmental, social, and governments that's what ESG stands for issues in its day-to-day -day work and operations. So it's basically the company being socially conscious. I had to look up what this means, so I didn't know why he explained it like that. You even have sinking franchises like Overwatch, which are pandering so much it's become self-parody. Blizzard recently announced they are actively working to address older characters' identities. All of this is being done simply for ESG reasons in the end, and I honestly believe Overwatch is just Blizzard's scapegoat franchise. So while sexual harassment cases still permeate throughout the company, Blizzard at least has a massive smokescreen where they can pander for eternity while not actually changing their culture. You know, I have to admit, that's a pretty good point, Andy. I know he mentions this later, but Nike is also like that too. They're like, oh hey, we're so good, we got Colin Kaepernick and we're doing social good. Meanwhile, they have sweatshops. Wait a minute, I just realized something. He brought all of this up because he was trying to prove his point that other companies are pandering, so that must mean that the people behind Spider-Verse must be pandering too. And the people he talks about have nothing to do with Sony, so... That's correlation without causation. Just look at the Netherlands, where in Rotterdam, they tore down historical figures of their history while erecting giant statues of out-of-shape women in track pants. I wish I was kidding. Okay, so while I would talk about how him calling the person depicted in the statue out of shape is pretty demeaning, and the fact that there are good reasons as to why statues are removed, I noticed a little something in that last clip. Notice how the statue of the quote-unquote historical figure that Andy shows is in fact not taken down? And that got me curious, so I asked some of my Dutch friends on Discord what statue this is and if they know anything about it, and they didn't recognize it. And one guy was like, hey, I don't recognize that, and that kind of looks like the statue outside of the London Parliament. And so I googled London Parliament statue and look what I found. The way he's holding the sword is the same, the way the horse's hoof is up looks the same, the background looks the same. So this means that he used the wrong country statue when talking about historical figures for the Netherlands. And you know, I would give him the benefit of the doubt that he just doesn't know that, but then I also googled Netherlands statue removal and the first result was this, which is great reason to take down a statue because yikes, why wasn't that taken down earlier? And he zooms in on the statue whenever he mentions that it's a historical figure and no, it's from Britain, not the Netherlands. I wish I was kidding whenever I can say that you didn't pass geography. Recently in Rotterdam, Nike has showcased a new statue showing an out of shape black woman in track pants looking disinterested. What's the statue supposed to represent? Diversity? Inclusion? Fat acceptance? Maybe all of the above? 
I don't understand how a statue of a nameless black female in track pants does anything for the people of Netherlands or diversity in general. Okay, so despite what he said there, I could not find any evidence that Nike paid for the statue or unveiled it. The statue is called Moments Contained, and it was made by black British sculptor Thomas J. Price, who specializes in works similar to Moments Contained, just black people existing. And the statue was given to the city by, I'm not gonna pronounce that, so I'm just gonna call him Dream Indeed Foundation. And apparently Nike clothing is really popular in Rotterdam. So popular that Nike made a version of their Air Max BWs called the Rotterdams. So the reason why you don't understand this, Andy, is because you don't live in the Netherlands. This would be like going to India and randomly planting a statue of a random white woman in a town square. Hey Andy, I don't know if you know this or not, but for 90 years, India was under the direct rule of the British, so there is a high possibility that that actually happened. Dang, he must have failed history too. To close out this video, I want to look at two other articles with the first from The Telegraph, which does something also politically correct, which is the erasure of white culture. The article titled, Anglo-Saxons Aren't Real, Cambridge Tells Students an Effort to Fight Nationalism. The short version of it is that institutions are working tirelessly to rewrite and reset what's perceived as history. They want to showcase statues of overweight nobodies to virtue signal without actually doing anything, and they want to erase concepts like white people because it's politically correct to think that way and it's deemed wrong think by the powers that be. Okay, I can agree that trying to erase that name is a bit out there, but then you just went all over the place. Like, I agree, trying to erase the term Anglo-Saxon because of its negative connotation is a bit of a stretch, no, not a bit of a stretch, really big of a stretch. But instead of debunking what they're saying by saying that Anglo-Saxon can still be used in a historical and archaeological context, you use it as a way to show that people are trying to eliminate white people? And by the way, this screenshot is from the exact same article that he listed. The background only looks different because one, forced dark mode, and two, I had to enter my email for a free trial in order to read the article and I wasn't gonna risk that, but then I saw that it was aggregated on Microsoft Start, so thank you Bill Gates. And Andy, you read this yourself that they're trying to fight nationalism this way. He doesn't mention this in the video, but the article mentions that the term Anglo-Saxon has actually become controversial. Some people in academia claim that people are using this term in order to justify their racist beliefs. So no, they aren't doing this to erase white people from history. And also, like I said, that's not in the Netherlands, that's in London, and it's still up. And also that statue wasn't made by Nike. While Gwen is not trans in Spider-Verse, the inclusion of trans visibility was at least to some degree done in a more tasteful way than other media has done in the past. Although if Gwen does indeed end up being trans, then it's simply a rewrite in order to pander because of its political correctness. Or, you know, it would make sense because we got hints that she was trans. We're currently living in a time where society is being pushed into a way of thinking that makes them complacent, faceless, and derivative. Says the guy who unironically released these four videos one after the other. To be actually outspoken about what you truly believe in should be encouraged, but should also not be problematic if someone debates it as well. You know, maybe it's not just the facts you're debating that's problematic. It could be the implication that you're making by debating it, or what you're actually saying that's problematic. We're all welcome to think however we please, but this annoying push that only politically correct ways of thinking is acceptable will never not anger me to no end. If you're so upset with other people's opinions and it makes you angry, then just don't care about if they view you as problematic and try and debate them. Also, I love his use of JC Denton from Deus Ex in the background there. It's like he's saying, I never asked for this. I never asked for out of shape black woman statues in the Netherlands. The pandering of today's world has gone completely off the deep end into the depths of moronic insanity. What originally was deemed fine is now quickly being replaced by what other groups wish to see, even if the new realities being pushed make little to no sense in any way. Okay, so I get your gripes about Overwatch 2 and that statue as much as you are incorrect about that statue, but Gwen being trans does make sense because there's evidence in the movie for it, or is that not what you mean? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. This is why Marvel, in their infinite wisdom, panders whenever they can, with one of their more popular characters being the Punisher. Oh. Oh, here we go. He's going to talk about the Punisher. Oh, oh, this is going to be great. Okay, so in case you didn't know, during the January 6th uh, insurrection where people just got into the Capitol building then walked around, a lot of the people who did that were wearing stuff that had the Punisher logo on it. And something similar happened during a terrorist attack in Israel. And since then, the Punisher logo has basically become a symbol for alt-right people. 
So let's hear what this guy has to say about it. But since the Skull logo Frank Castle wears on his chest was deemed problematic and was a symbol of right-wing conservatives and police, Marvel decided to not just remove the Skull from Punisher, they removed the Punisher from the Marvel Universe. Notice how he doesn't mention January 6th in that part. Notice that? Did you notice that? You know, it's like maybe Marvel didn't want to associate themselves with the people from the January 6th attack, so they redesigned the logo so that it doesn't look like that. All of this because the Punisher represents identity politics that woke companies like Marvel don't want to represent. He's straight, white, and a male. He's a firearms expert that police officers use to represent them in the real world. He's also a strong male character that defiantly stands up to his ideals, and Marvel can't have that in today's climate. Um, but they can because something like that happens in Across the Spider-Verse. Spoilers ahead, by the way. Whenever Miles learns that his father is going to die, and that if he does save his father, then his reality is going to collapse, he stands up and is like, I'm gonna go save my dad, and everyone else is like, no, Miles, you can't do that, but he still tries to do it anyway. That's what this part of the trailer is hinting at. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. And there's nothing about Miles that would make Andy not mention his story, right? Unless he has an agenda or something. Also, Marvel still has straight white male characters like Tom Holland Spider-Man, Peter Quill, Thor, or heck, in this movie, Peter Parker has, or at least had, a wife. And, you know, some of them are probably played by straight people, so that means they're straight according to your logic. So yeah, Marvel isn't trying to erase straight white people. Or they don't want to associate with people who got butt hurt and tried to overthrow a nation and failed. The Punisher is and always will be one of my favorite Marvel characters because he felt like a real depiction of what a vigilante would actually be like. By removing him entirely, it proves that Marvel and companies like them will move the heavens if it means they can deem themselves as inclusive and diverse. Okay, it definitely seems like he knows why the Punisher was erased because, like, he's not bringing up January 6th or, like, you know, the main reason why people, like, you know, get really mad or upset whenever people have the Punisher logo on them these days. And, like, having your favorite comic book character being associated with someone bad, like, that can be, like, pretty hard to contemplate, you know? But you can't just say that, like, they removed him because he's white and a male and, like, literally no other reason. It's all very tiring, but it's the current climate of today, and I genuinely revolt in the existence of this insane way of thinking. So you were revolted when you saw a trans flag in a movie. Okay. But to end this video, I just want to say that if you've watched any of my other stuff before, I implore you like I always do to question everything you see and always look deeper. I mean, I did question a lot of stuff you said in this video, and after looking deeper into your claims, I found out that you were lying, or at least unknowingly misleading, about a lot of things. And you know what? I feel like I did a pretty good job doing that. Thanks for reminding me, man. Now I know that your greatest weakness is just a simple Google search. I know I might sound like a broken record by saying that, but seriously guys, you have to stay vigilant in a world that rewards laziness and complacency. Lazy as in constantly talking about woke things over and over again is that kind of lazy? Bringing up the same points over and over again like a broken record, like this record that I have that is literally broken? Alright, I'll stop. I think you get it by now. And yeah, sometimes I had to censor the thumbnails because there would be cleavage or butts or a transformer with giant boobs for some reason. I just love the fact knowing that he or his thumbnail maker had to download that specific picture in order to make that thumbnail. It's, it's magnificent. And he looked at that and was like, yeah, that's a great thumbnail. I should totally use this thumbnail, this beautiful, magnificent thumbnail. It's so good, man. Okay, another editor's note, and trust me, you are gonna love this. Also, I don't care if the audio is peaking. I am just so flabbergasted by what I just found out. So against my better judgment and out of sheer curiosity, I reverse image searched the Transformers thumbnail. And it turns out it's from a YouTube parody called Transformers. You see what they did there? You see what they did there? 
You get it? You get it? That was created back in the totally not a bad year at all year of 2016. It makes fun of everything. There's pronouns, dead naming, safe spaces. I think that fat people are fat because they're so big and fat. Making objectification into one big joke. And hey, that's just like someone else I know. I have no idea how to transition. <laughs> transition. Back to what I was originally talking about, but uh... I'm dead inside. And there, that's basically the end of Endy's video. And oh my god, the amount of mental gymnastics I had to do while watching this, and like, like I said, I was doing this unscripted again, was just so immense. Like, I'm getting a mad sense of Poe's law because this is the kind of stuff that I would imagine someone like him saying, and it's like, wait, is this guy being serious or is he just like, trying to make a character and like pandering to like the people who actually believe this stuff. And like I said in the intro, I'm probably not going to do another Endymion video in a long time, if not at all, because I just like need a mental rest from this stuff and I have actual videos that I want to make. So yeah, that'll be it for me. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment if you want to and respond with what your own opinions on this video. Thank you all for the great response on the last video and I hope you have a good day. And one last thing, I know I'm probably breaking my own rules here, but I wanted to respond to one thing Endymion said in his video about the Nick Merck situation. The LGBT community is by far the most protected class of human beings in today's society. Endy, I know you live in Canada and all, but have you ever heard of Florida by chance?